aren't I done yet? <laughs> Welcome to another yeah. round of. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say, I was gonna say so, but you, but you took, but you stole the intro. All right, so get our lives because. Um, Scrappy will be mad if you don't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, more, more of this, more of this garbage. <laughs> um, where are we? Here. Get my... Oh, we already had two worlds done. Yeah, we got quite, a, quite a bit done last session, so that's good at least. Yeah, uh, well, we, we, we had some off topic stuff to. So, so not, it's not as bad. Well, here's what doesn't take that long because I'm hardly paying attention again. <laughs> right. Um. So you said you had to, like one uh, of the four topics prepared. I okay. I had a. I remember two of the topics at least. Uh, I. <laughs> I really, I really should have like ri written the, them down when I had had them in my head because I tried really hard in the past like 20 minutes trying to remember what I was going to talk about and I just can't remember. <laughs> Um, yeah, for the record, for the record people, um, uh, I'm 20 minutes late to the recording because family. Right. <laughs> oh, hello, there's a star right there. Right, so this is, uh... Yeah, this is a little bit tricky. Oh. Couldn't you have used Yoshi for this one, or no? I don't think... No, wait, we're you... at the start. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, Yoshi's not here yet. Um, but... But, oh, excuse I me. I don't know, I guess, like, I kind of had, like, another idea with, like, the green stars, or... Oh, damn it. Uh, something sim- think... Yeah? No, no, never mind, sorry. Maybe I, maybe I like... Maybe, I was gonna say, maybe you're going a little too late. Probably, I, I can- you were that, It's either that or you're going too far out. I can, like, hang onto the ledge, maybe, and then, like... Okay, that was a complete oh, accident, no. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was, like, trying to slowly- Inch so I could hang onto the ledge, but then I just fell and like just instincts took took uh, took over. Um, <coughs> Mario sixty four had green stars. They'd actually want you to do the you know the backwards stair slide glitch. Oh jeez. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No, no. 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 You have to do the backwards long jump glitch and uh, and use the momentum to reach a star. Okay. Th th okay. So th that's that's. I you guess it's like, some... like you like you find the right thing and you just like zoom catapulting practically outside of, outside of the invisible wall. I guess that's something we could we can talk about. Like I uh... ah yes Mario glitches. Let's go. Yeah. Well, more specifically, what I I hate I hate it when like fan uh, hacks or like Mario Maker levels or whatever like requ require that kind of stuff. It's like it's one thing. Oh yeah, no, I I remember that. I remember yeah. seeing like a um. Uh, I remember when I was watching Alpha Rad's like Mario Maker two videos. They they actually required you to do this weird momentum glitch with the flops. Yeah, no, I. It's one thing for that to just be like funny speedrun tech and all that, but it's another for it to be required to beat the freaking game. Okay. Doesn't Kaizo doesn't Ka Kaizo often ask for that? I think so. <laughs> I mean, I guess with that, it's Kaizo, so you expect it. But you know, for a regular, oh. for a regular like hack or um like just some random mario maker level like it does that stuff all the time and it's just irritating well i'm trying to, well like i can't remember the last time i even played mario maker <laughs> no i haven't played it in ages i just remember yeah same i don't remember if it's mario maker one or two but there's this infamous like mario world stage someone made that's literally just like 10 seconds long but it's a problem because like you have to do this glitched wall jump <laughs> It's like, why? <laughs> uh. it's not, it's, it, you know what that reminds me of? It's like if you tried to do... You, you know how in um Lost Lo Mario 2, Mario Lost Levels, yeah. like sometimes you kind of like push off the wall sometimes when you jump into it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Imagine having to do that, like, consistently. Yeah. <laughs> when I'm pretty sure it's nothing more but a glitch. Yeah, as far as I'm concerned, like, glitches should not be required to beat a game. <laughs> like, it's stupid. I mean, yeah, again, like, fan hacks or something, whatever, but... Right. <laughs> like, I'm imagining if I try to play, like, a Mario fan hack or something, and, I just, and, I, and I'm literally lost. It's like, oh, just do this forehead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? You have to do this for this frame perfect glitch? Yeah, right. Oh god. 
What do you mean only experts can do it? What the heck is the green star? What do you mean? I'm re what do you mean I'm required to do the? What do you? What do you? What do you? What do you mean I'm required to do cannon list? <laughs> oh God! I I haven't. I've still never managed to do that. I've done it. I've tried. And I feel, and it felt really good. Why did you jump over there? I was gonna be like, what are you going? Where are you going? <laughs> Mario wanted to <laughs> angle his jump for some reason. It's not supposed to go at an angle. Yeah. Wow, you you fretted that hole right there. <laughs> yeah, but I, I guess the other thing I was gonna talk, the the thing I was actually gonna talk about is to do with the green stars. Like, I guess a, a better way they could have done it is uh, if they made the green stars like maybe like a hard mode for the game or something. Like, cause they they do something pretty much. Oh, okay. Uh, they they did pretty much do like, the. Yep. They pretty much do that in like 3D Land and World, where you beat the game and you get like the special worlds, which is like the same levels again, but like remixed and harder and stuff. I feel like if the Green Stars did something like that; it would be a lot more palatable. Hmm. Again, um, though, some people might just see it as padding. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it would it padding would as is. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's padding as is. <clears throat> I, I I would definitely prefer this over what we have now because you know it uh, if they made it so you go through the oh you gotta do this backwards right um can you just like okay um oh, oh that one's actually not that hard yeah um if you did the normal 120 stars and like forget having to get all the green stars um like remove that from having to unlock grandmaster galaxy if you could just get Grandmaster after the regular 120, and then after that, Green Star showed up, it's like, oh, do go through the game again on hard mode. It, if that was the case, that, like, people who are just done with the game at that point can just stop playing and <clears throat> be satisfied, but for those who want an extra challenge, they can go through the game again and have it be a lot harder. Um, uh, I feel like that would be a, better, a, a way better way to do, like, content like this without having it forced on the player. It'll basically be this game's equivalent to like the Luigi story or whatever, which is, you know, what this game, what the green stars technically are, but less forced on you, I guess. Mm. I feel, I don't know. Basically, basically make it have them be optional. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, or, or like my, I like more, even more ideal version of it would be, uh, like I said in the last session, make the green stars like a star coin kind of collectible. Um, and then when you do all the stuff that I mentioned before, like beat the game, get all the collectible green stars and all that, uh, you get the hard mode like like before, but they're red stars instead of green. That would be kind of interesting as well. Where is it? Oh. Oh, that's not fun. <laughs> Gook. <laughs> I was gonna be like that. I was gonna be like that. Looks like a very not fun one to grab. Oh, there's no checkpoint. Luigi would definitely make that. Yeah. I mean, I think I was just like the angle was just off. Well, for what I'm assuming they want you to do is triple jump off of the blocks at a right. Oh yeah, I think I had to. Oh, oops. I... Okay, uh, Harry. <laughs> I completely mistimed that. Um. Yeah, the... <laughs> what is it? I remember when I did the spinless challenge, I had to do the triple jump. Oh, some of you did green stars with a, with a triple... with a spinless challenge? What is wrong with you? Kinda. Uh, 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 well, you tried, you tried. Uh, I'll, I'll, right. I'll be... I'll be blunt. I kinda <laughs> gave up with half of the stuff. Like, a lot of the stuff that was, like, really annoying to do... Um, like, just going through the level... I kind of just said screw it. I can't be bothered. <laughs> From what this looks like to me is like it looks like it wants you to, to triple jump a, a at the right moment. Start a triple jump at the right moment. Yeah. Oh wait, no. Uh. Like it wants you to start in the yellow. Once it goes to green, you start moving forward. Yeah, like that. Damn it. Yeah. Oh, almost. Almost. I'm assuming. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Something like that. That's what I'm okay. assuming they want you to do. Okay, I need to line that up better. 
It's probably directly lined up the middle if I had this doom. Yeah, I can change the camera like that. That would be better. Well, I noticed that when you did camera. that, I, noticed, <laughs> I was gonna say, I noticed when you got over there, the camera kind of locked at a weird angle. Yeah. Well, if, if the camera gets locked again, then you're gonna have to just guesswork it. Pretty much. Then, yeah, I noticed a lot of the kit stars were doing that at points. Can you turn it? Oh, that looks so weird. Oh, yeah, it looks like, let's, well... Okay, it's like middle-ish? Middle, yeah, okay. Ah! Well, we take Save you? Okay. I'll take it. Right. Okay. Yeah, it's definitely lined up at the center. Uh, okay. There you, go. <sighs> you just barely made that. Yeah, one. I was like, <laughs> I was like, why, why hasn't Mario touched a star yet? <laughs> <laughs> The very tip of Mario's nose hairs touched the star and it counted. Yeah. I don't know, what did you- What would you- how would you guys feel if they did the green stars like that? Or like, made red stars uh, like a hard mode or whatever? Oh, I know. I'm not a game designer. Well, well I know like- That has never stopped me from having a take, Jason, so don't- <laughs> well, Don't I mean, sell like, yourself short. No, no, you, you don't necessarily like have, have to have an idea of like what it would be like. Just the idea of a hard mode in the game period. I think uh, I mean, Mario should just have one health, one hit point, and all the enemies should be he like take twice as much damage. Oh my god! Daredevil, everything the Daredevil <laughs> comment. Yeah, there will be no. It would be like the um, a hero, hero mode mixed with the Ganondorf amiibo in Twilight Princess HD, where you die, you die to like a fart. Uh. <laughs> oh god! Oh yeah, or like a dre dread mode in Metro Dread. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you mean the little in the kill mode? Yeah. Where's what? I have like, 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 never tried that yet. I've heard horror stories. The funny, like the funny thing about it is that the enemies technically don't one shot you now. <laughs> yeah, I give the because oh. yeah, the enemies catch you. The cutscene triggers where you have to, we have a split second to get away from them. Yeah, yeah, no, I meant. Yeah, no, I mentioned that. I was joking to Hub about that. Whereas, like, the funny thing is, the only thing that can't to kill you are the Emmys. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. hilarious. Um, Harry, it might actually be better just to get the silver stars first, so at least oh, right. turn off the switch. Yeah, off. I guess. Maybe. Well, I mean, we see where it is. Hopefully, the way the blocks end up being at the end doesn't screw things up. We'll probably barely get the, no their pressure, Harry. Early. Keep him on yellow then. Or you want him on green? Green will probably <laughs> be the best. Well, at least we can see it and the drop shadow. Yeah. Alright. Yeah, okay, I don't trust these guys. Alright. No, not that one! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you can just barely reach that. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right, it's really high up up here. <laughs> Good thing I'm used to this. Yeah. Oh, actually, that's better. I just realized this is one of the Mar 3D Mario games where Mario doesn't take fall damage. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think, like... The it's like the Galaxy games, Odyssey. Odyssey. I assume 3D Land. Don't and... you take fall damage, right? Wait, what? Yeah, 3D Land and 3D World. I'm assuming you don't take fall damage. Yeah. Sun but Sunshine, I don't think. Uh, Sunshine, I think you do. Yeah, no, you definitely do. That's why you have blood. Right. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah I know yeah 64 and Sunshine you mm -hmm. do. I think, I think it's like less pronounced in Sunshine though, because I know <laughs> if you fall from a like high height from in 64, you can lose like. Half or more of your, half of your health or more. <laughs> it can never instant kill you though, right? I don't think so. But like, you'd have to right, so test that. Though. Okay, I. I well, think... if I had a file that goes to the top of Peach's castle, I'd probably try something like that. <laughs> oh god, I. <laughs> I remember. Mario, don't do this to me. Oh, <laughs> this again? Yeah. I need a new controller. 
Okay, I think first one should be like around here. Yeah, okay. Okay, oh, that that is obnoxious. <laughs> <laughs> like it's a good thing I remembered that one, because like otherwise it's just kind of a dick. We're move. right past it. Yeah. Yeah, um... Oh boy! Uh, sorry guys, uh, sh I'm still getting back from dinner, so my stomach kinda hurts. Alright. Okay, I'm glad I'm not the only one who gets that sometimes. Like, after I eat, I, my body kinda, like, stops existing for a little bit. I feel like I'm about to crash. Bandicoot. Okay. Oh no. Uh, cash, yeah. cash There you go. Gring, gring, Gringotts Steakhouse. Uh... <laughs> Green got Great thing. commentary, guys. <laughs> I mean, these are the gr these are the green stars. Who gives a crap? <laughs> we're at, we're at, listen, we're actually talking. This is we're already doing way better than Donkey Kong Country Returns. <laughs> I mean, yeah, as long as we're like as long as we're talking, like it's fine, I guess. Uh, like I said, like I said, at least this is going way better than the, than, than Returns did as a whole. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I was gonna say, you mentioned the top of the castle thing. I remember, like, as a kid, I, I tried really hard to, like, get to the very top of Peach's castle, hoping that- Oh, yeah, me too. I, I've always tried to use, like, the side where the waterfall was on. Yeah, well, and I've, I, I, like, always kind of hoped that there's just a secret 121st star there. <laughs> and, like, I, I just remember being really disappointed when I actually reached it and there was just nothing. I just like trying to sequence break. I mean, that too. Like, the thing I... When I beat 64, I always do that glitch where you just... Uh, what is it? Go through the castle walls and you just kind of glitch. <laughs> uh, so where is this green star? Um, I'm assuming you need to hit a snowball out somewhere really up to. So I remember it being, like, near the edge. I can't freaking see is the problem. Well, maybe you just, like, use the first person to take a look around. I'm trying to look for the spark. Oh, I think I see it. Is that it over there? Yeah, I see it, I see it, I see it. Death by snowball, yeet! Yeah. Yep, yeah, this is the right way. That's pretty cool, actually. No, that one's, that one's actually <clears throat> kind of neat. Although well, I probably, if I remember correctly, what I, I probably just found it and just try to jump onto it. Yeah, I mean, you can just damage boost as well. The problem, the problem with that though, if you, if you miss, if you gonna, mess up, your if you miss, yeah, you die. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like when Mario starts bouncing around like that, it's kind of hard to redirect him. At least it's not freaking, um, uh, what's it called? Sunshine, where it feels like Mario just goes anywhere when his ass gets burned. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that is, I think that's the most evident, ex evident example of realistic physics in a Mario game. Except, you, except I don't know anybody who can just, like, do a dive, like, a sudden dive like that in midair. <laughs> yeah, no, well, the, the, the thing with sun sh burning yourself in sunshine is that, like, Mario kind of just goes straight up and down, and you can barely move it. Kind of, like, turns around a little bit, too, or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Like... Upper it up. Yeah. You have had it hidden in the house, so you have to roll into it to get the green star. Oh, that would have been cute. <laughs> Alright, this is the one where I don't remember where it is, so this will be fun. Really leveraging this early area. Yeah. Do you think there's enough of these ice guys? <laughs> no, not enough. <laughs> oh my god, please. So yeah, uh, <laughs> um, I, I guess the other thing I had had in mind, uh, I guess, um, I don't know. I how how do you how do you guys feel about hub worlds in games? They're fine. What hub worlds? They're they're fine. I, I don't have any. I, I have no strong opinions on them one way or the other. 
Okay, because I was going to bring that up because um, something... This is more to do with, like, Odyssey more than anything, but screw it, we have, like, nothing to talk about. Um, I think one thing I, that's, that I've come to realize that, like, the, the reason why Odyssey doesn't... No, don't get me wrong, I really like Odyssey, but one thing that uh, it doesn't... It doesn't click with me as much as 64 or Sunshine because there really is no hub world. Um, like some games don't need it that like that much. I don't. I don't mind it being taken a back side, back seat in the Galaxy games, for example. But um, there's just something special about exploring Peach's Castle or Delfino Plaza and just having a place to just explore and relax in and having barely any danger of dying. Uh, like, I don't know, Odyssey just doesn't really have that, and I feel like, I mean, I get it, like, it, the way the game's structured, it kind of can't have one, but, I don't know. <clears throat> well, Pikmin, Pikmin 4 has a hub world, if you can mm. believe it. That's interesting. I, I hear it. I don't know, I, I generally just enjoy having a area in a game where you can just kind of take things easy and not worry about, like, imminent danger or anything like that. Like, not every game needs that. Like, some games, like, a lot of, like, most 2D platformers or whatever, like, you don't need stuff like that outside of, like, the general world map, which is fine, but I think for a bigger experience, it's appreciate it to just calm down every now and then. Oops. There it is. Oh, uh, cool. Oh, oh okay. okay. That's nice. How nice of them. Oh, I was... Okay, that brings... I remember one thing I was going to talk about now that I mentioned that. Uh, you know, it's... It's kind of funny how, like, you know, you go through space and all that in the Galaxy games, but I feel like... No, I still feel like 64 is the most, like, mysterious feeling Mario game. I I don't know if you guys know what I mean by that, but just something about that game just feels really strange. Um, and I don't think Early the... 3D. Yeah. <clears throat> it was a literal new frontier for everyone. Eh? Like... Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, it's... And... And 64 like, draw distance does kind of lead to a lot of abstract level design at times. Yeah, yeah it's a lot to do with like mm. console limitations, but it's also just the way the I guess the way the game presents itself, like the way like you're slowly uh, like finding out more about the castle and finding all these weird secrets about it, and just the idea of jumping into paintings that take you to worlds is like that by itself is just really mysterious. Um. I'm back, sorry. Hi. Debatably the most absurdist that a Mario game, or at least a 3D Mario game, was up to that point. Yeah. Until maybe certain parts of Odyssey. Yeah, because like... I mean, you're going... I mean, absurdity? Definitely. I mean, at one point in Odyssey, there's one point where you just... where you find a scooter and then you're suddenly being chased by a dinosaur. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, that is true, yeah. Uh, well, Odyssey is more... I, I'd say it's more abstract in the... Uh, it, I don't. I I don't know. It, I I pr I probably wouldn't say it's like strange in the same way 64 is though. Like 64, just something about it is just so. Oh god. Okay, I'll take oh. it. That should not have worked. <laughs> well, you know what they say in the No, I I I'm thinking about stuff like like Hazy Maze Cave or that weird town in. Uh, Wet dry world, like, and the way the music changes to reflect how, like, like, otherworldly it is, like, now when I think about stuff like that, like, 64 just sticks out to me in, in that sense. It's, it's a strange Mario game, but it was yeah. also the, the ground, ground layer, um, yeah, ground layer, I guess, for the rest of the, all the subsequent 3D Mario platformers, so it would kind of obfuscate. 
to a degree, obfuscate. Yeah. Holy crap. Obfuscate. obfuscates how weird a 64 <laughs> is. Yeah. It's funny it's because... Part... Yeah, you, fin you, fin yeah, you finish first. Partially explained by plot reasons with Bowser and his magic, but... 64 is a kind of lonely game. Ah, that's probably a lot to do with it as well. It does... You feel kind of stranded. <laughs> like, there's a handful of toads in the castle, and that's kind of it. Yeah. Like, 64 DS, obviously, by virtue of having more characters, kind of... Lessens the isolation slightly, even if your yeah. friends are stuck in rooms most of the time. I think 64 DS, or, or <clears throat> it, the difference also is also the fact that like it uses the uh, like character models you you expect, and it doesn't have like the weird N64 uh, stuff going on. So yeah, the swamps aren't ugly. <laughs> <laughs> I said it before, but it, it would have been such a nice detail. Yeah, I love that one. I love that one. That one. Yeah, right? No, I, I I would have loved if Throwback Galaxy just painted the font there blue. <laughs> that would have been such a cool detail. Yeah. No, 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 use the original texture. <laughs> oh, God. Mm-mm. Do I have that sound effect? Yeah. I will say this. Yeah. If, they, if Odyssey 2 actually happens, they have to make our oh, Delfino the post-game world. <laughs> Yeah, I guess I that was that. Because, like, you know, they, they did they did the 64 callback with Mushroom Kingdom in Odyssey, like the first Odyssey, so, you know, it only makes sense to do the Sunshine callback for the second one. Mm. Although, that being said, I kind of... I don't know if they... It's been so long since Odyssey, I don't know if they're just going to do, like, do something completely different at this point. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. Maybe. <laughs> I was expecting that Chomp would knock you off. I think he just- he just killed himself! <laughs> I saw the ruler pop in. Yeah. Oh god. Mario 64 is a very- I mean, it's just an odd, abstract, intentionally and unintentionally surreal game. Yeah. And like, even Banjo-Kazooie coming out, like, about two years later kind of puts that into contrast. Yeah. Yeah, it's weird, like... I f Hmm... I guess Grund Grundy's less specifically has a lot of, like, weirdness and intrigue to it, but... I... I still... I still think 64 just has... Has it be in terms of just sheer... Like, weirdness, I guess? I don't know. Just, it's just something about how that game feels. Just atmosphere-wise, I mean. Okay, I don't remember where these green stars are at, are at all. I think I heard one in, like, the overview. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and, my, um, okay. and my nephew is banging blocks in the background. <laughs> Amazing. A kid after my own heart. <laughs> um, so, alright, since all my internet research, that's what, you, that's, what you, that's what you want to call it, if my inter internet research taught me right, what you might be experiencing with Mario 64 is a concept of liminal space. Hmm. Maybe? Like the, the relatively closed, empty nature of Mark 64's backgrounds lends itself to a certain eeriness. Yeah, that, that probably has a lot to do with it. And that's also kind of reflected by, like, those early N64 and just general 5th generation oh. video game renders. Oh, uh, wow. That you grab it, please! <laughs> what the heck? Uh, Why? That was... Okay. Well, at least I know where it is now. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, if that's. Pardon me, what was I saying? Ah, Yoshi. Yoshi! If. So, yes, there is, beyond the like, general nostalgia, there is a certain reason why. Like, why, like, you know, early 3D in game stuff and, like, early, like, promotional renders kind of have a certain vibe to them. 
Yeah. Like the limitations are an, an aesthetic in and of themselves. Yeah, like the uh, sp sp like with Mario sixty four specifically, like the 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 art art in like you see in like the manual is like completely different from the actual game. <gasps> I guess one that sticks out to me is like Metal Mario and Hazy Maze Cave. Mm. That one just has that's that's N sixty four aesthetic. Yeah. Yeah. I I would uh oh right 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 here. Grab okay. Okay. I I couldn't tell where the hitbox was lined up. Now imagine doing this with this with Mario sixty four's sense of space. I guess. <laughs> Yeah. Honestly, it might be easier because the shadow would be like a giant oval. <laughs> yeah. True. I feel like we have not quite. Yeah, Mario 64's what? like shadows just had. They just used circles, didn't they? I, pr I presume so. I'm pretty okay. sure they were, pretty mm. sure they were just circles. That was standard procedure for pretty much every 3D game of the time. Yeah, I remember like, when mascot platformers. I remember when, uh, like, when Crash 3 came out. Like, they made it a big deal that the the shadows were actually like realistic and not like circles. <laughs> eh. Funny enough, like one of the instances the most realistic shadows is probably one of the more more detriment parts about it. I'm talking about Sonic Unleashed HD. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's why. <laughs> that's why I like. Uh, you know, like. Uh, what was it Crash Four? Like that, that. That's why I appreciate them giving you that circle, uh, drop shadow yeah, thing. Yeah. Because I, I. It makes the, it makes the game so much more manageable. Like it's still hard as balls, but like it. It, that's, <laughs> the, the, it the helps little, with the precision platforming. It makes things a lot less painful than they would be otherwise. <laughs> like I, said, I am I reading that. Yeah. I am I'm reading right, Wikipedia. Yeah. This is from Wikipedia's article on liminal space as an aesthetic. Oh, dude. Liminal spaces are the sub. Holy crud. Liminal spaces <laughs> are the subject of an internet aesthetic supernatural portraying empty or abandoned places that appear eerie, forlorn, or often and often surreal. Okay. Liminal spaces are commonly places of transition, pertaining to the concept of liminality or nostalgic appeal. This is my practice for story time episode 100, which is still happening. Hey, it's like uh, me trying to read off a s script. Like, it's hard. <laughs> when, was the, when was the last time you had just? When was the last time you did, you did story time? Like late May, early June. Ah! I think last reported. Thank you, Harry. Research from the Journal of Environmental Psychology has indicated that liminal spaces may appear eerie or strange because they fall into an uncanny valley of architecture and physical spaces. Places. An article from Pulse, the Journal of Science and Culture, Get right. has attributed this eeriness has attributed this eeriness to familiar familiar places lacking their usually observed tact context. Oh, oh, they... The aesthetic gained popularity in 2019 after a post on 4chan. Ah, there it is. It's what's on, it's what's 4chan, on the end. 4chan, the whatever. Yeah. This one looks relatively easy, then. If I don't... I mean, I have to go on this thing, so it's like... The... 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 Oh god, no, 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 no. Don't slip off. Just jump off a Yoshi. What? Why, why, why would that help? <laughs> no, I, no, I meant, like, jump boost. Like, use him as a... <laughs> well, no, that... I, I would have to angle it, then, if I did it early. Okay. The aesthetic gained popularity in 2019 after a post on 4chan depicting a liminal space called the back rooms went viral. Oh, that again. Went... <laughs> right, moving on. Hi. Hi. Pardon. Uh. Were you, uh, still talking? I stopped. The characteristics of the limo space aesthetic <clears throat> are as follows, according to the article. 
no, 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 sorry, it sounds like funny. Oh. Broadly the term loot? Yeah. Oh, me. right, I forgot to choose Broadly. the Luigi. I'll get one of these. Broadly, the term liminal space is used to describe a place of, of change or transition. This may be physical, for example, a doorway, or psychological, like a period of adolescence. <laughs> liminal space imagery often depicts a sense of in-between, capturing transitional places such as stairwells, roads, corridors, or hotels, oh, come on. Unsettlingly, unsettlingly devoid of people. The aesthetic may convey moods of eeriness, surrealness, nostalgia, or sadness and elicit responses of both comfort and unease. Nice. Research by... Research by Alexander... Last name is spelled D-I-E-L, like some deal, I think. Deal. Hmm. Research by Alexander Deal and Michael Lewis of Cardiff University has attributed the unsettling nature of liminal spaces to the phenomenon of the uncanny valley. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> um, <clears throat> The term, which is usually applied to humanoids whose inexact resemblance to humans elicits, whose inexact resemblance to humans elicits feelings of unease, may explain similar reasons, responses to liminal imagery. In this case, physical places may, physical places that appear familiar but subtly deviate from reality, create the sense of eeriness typical of liminal spaces. Peter Hatz of Pulse, the Journal of Science and Culture, further explores his sense of eeriness. Drawing on the word, drawing on the works of Mark Fisher, Hatz explains such eeriness may be felt when an individual views a situation in a different, in a different context to what they expect. For example, a schoolhouse expected to be a busy amalgamation of teachers and students becomes, un ugh, becomes unsettling when depicted as unnaturally empty. <laughs> this quote. This failure of presence was considered by Fisher to be one of the hallmarks of the aesthetic experience of eeriness. I mean, I think so. Like, I mean, when a pandemic was at its peak, there were a lot of liminal spaces. Yeah, around let's in go. Public. Yeah. This. No, keep going. Keep going. Yeah, no, <laughs> this is actually kind of fascinating. This is actually kind of fascinating. And what be a very short history portion of this article is as follows. Images depicting liminal spaces gained popularity in 2019 when a short creepypasta of unknown origin was posted on 4chan and went viral. The, creepy... <clears throat> the creepypasta showed an image exemplifying a liminal space. A hallway with yellow carpets and wallpaper. With a caption purporting, <laughs> with a caption purporting that by, quote, no clipping out of bounds in real life, unquote. <laughs> one may enter the one may enter the back rooms an empty wasteland of corridors with nothing but the stink but quote the stink of old moist carpet the bad the madness of mono yellow the endless background noise of fluorescent lights at maximum maximum humbuzz and approximately 600 million square miles of randomly segmented segmented empty rooms to be trapped in unquote <laughs> end quote all I know about the back rooms is like just from this um uh source filmmaker video I've seen. <laughs> God. Liminal space images soon gained popularity across the internet, and by November 2022, a subreddit called basically r slash liminal liminal space had over 500,000 members. The liminal space, <clears throat> liminal, liminal space oh, photo I posting. I see the green star. Yeah. Liminal space photo, liminal space photo posting at space liminal bot on Twitter had accrued over 1.2 million followers, and a TikTok hashtag liminal spaces hashtag. Well, for Pete's nice. sake. Oh, that was easy. Oh my <laughs> gosh, the TikTok liminal spaces hashtag had over 2 billion views. Where did this come from again? A uh, liminal space. Uh, like that, or are you, are you, you like, what, why is it? Are we talking about at, like a period? Or? Yeah, I think, you were, I think I remember you talking something about Mario 64. <laughs> no, it, it was to do Harry with. Yeah, it was to do with like 64 and like the mysterious, cre like, I don't know if creepiness is the right word, but yeah. Eeriness. Eeriness, yeah. What, of, like, what was practically an abandoned castle? Yeah, I mean, you, you do have something there with the, uh, uh, what is it, um, 
the loneliness, I guess, because <laughs> um, you you kind of just feel oh, you, you kind of just feel alone for most of the game. Where it's like with the other 3D Mario games, you don't really feel that because well, I don't know. Like I I, I with, with 3D 3D Land, like it's it feels more like a stage by stage like regular progression. So it's like it wouldn't. It doesn't feel as pronounced with that, but you know, Sunshine, you have like the Toads and and Peach for mo uh, for most of the game and all that, and you know, it doesn't feel very lonely. And then, oh, I see. Oh, I see what the game wants you to do. Yeah, and then the Galaxy games, like you have like a bunch of people like in the in the hubs, so it's like you don't get that. Well, I, well the most you have in the castle is just Toads and maybe the occasional rabbit. Yeah, like. It feels very deserted. <laughs> Effectively, so you're stuck in a pretty ab borderline abandoned hub world, and uh, because it's early 3D on a very, it's early 3D on the end on the on the N64, so the mm. stages themselves are kind of pretty decently empty when you're not facing enemies. So yeah, you're what's the word? The levels are almost diorama like, so yeah. I guess everything's pretty abs. Everything's pretty everything ab is abstract. Abstract, and there's a lot of floating islands. So yeah, not only are the levels kind of abandoned, they're just kind of floating in the ether. I guess the other, f um, I'm trying to see what I was gonna say. Uh... I completely lost my train of thought. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I know it's a, it's fascinating to like hear about the whole. Uh, was it liminal space? And I, I brought up the. Okay, that wasn't too bad. I brought up the like promotional renders of Mario 64 and just the general era. I mean, one, because it was just an easy segue, and also because... <clears throat> Dave, I didn't even know you left. <laughs> he, he, he said he, he said BRB a little while ago. 